the topic scripture of uh, Philippians 4 and 6. All right. And for, so y'all can understand easier, like for people my age and down, I'm going to be speaking from the Good News Translation. Yeah, that sounds kind of weird. It's not King James or NIV, but it's GNT. All right. So it is, it reads, don't worry about anything, but in all your prayers, ask God for what you need. Always asking him with a thankful heart. That's pretty much it. Today I'm going to be speaking from the scripture, no reason to worry. And I know a lot of times people always worry about different things, like pretty much not making the basketball team or failing your test. Yeah, that happens a lot, like for a lot of people. And like just different things. But I'm going to tell y'all, y'all don't have any reason to worry. <clears throat> the first, there are like many different reasons why you shouldn't be worrying because God doesn't want you to worry and different things like that. So my first point is, he says in his word that we shouldn't be afraid or worry. The script, Isaiah 41 and 10 from the GNT says, Do not be afraid. I am with you. I am your God. Let nothing terrify you. I will make you strong and help you, and I will protect you and save you. That pretty much, cl that clearly points out God's love for us, and it also points out that he doesn't want us to worry about anything. Also, you shouldn't even worry about whenever you sin. I know sometimes it's kind of hard to worry about whenever you sin because you're like, man, I can never come back from this. It's all hard, but definitely you can come back from this. 1 John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. No matter what you did in your life in the past, you're, you're forgiven as long as you repent and depend on him that you're forgiven. Limitations 3 and 23 says, his mercies never come to an end and they are new every morning. According to this scripture, every morning you wake up, it is as if the last day you have never sinned. That's why you can't get caught up in the mindset of, dang, I sinned. I can never come back from this, as I said earlier. But you have to be, according to this scripture, you can most definitely come back. The second reason why we shouldn't worry is because there is no reason to worry because all you have to do is just cast your cares on him. 1 Peter 5 and 7 says, leave all your worries with him because he cares for you. This scripture means that worrying and beating yourself up over stuff is pointless. The only thing you have to do when it comes to your problems is leave it up to God. I know it may seem hard, but honestly, that's it. Like, that's really it. All you have to do is just give your, prom give your problems to him. And 2 Corinthians 12 and 10 says, I am content with weakness, insults, hardship, persecutions, and difficulties. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. This scripture is pretty much saying when you've done all, everything you can do, that's when God will step in and do what you can't do. Every time you worry, you're wasting your time and energy on pointless things. It's almost like a dog chasing his own tail. Because, like, like, he'll never be able to catch it. But if you, like, take, give it to him, he'll probably be able to bite it. But, like, if he's just doing like this constantly, he'll end up getting dizzy and then fall. And that's what you'll do whenever you're chasing your own problem. <laughs> so that's why I'm relating it to that. But... We, but like, as I said earlier, if you give the tail to him, then he can bite it. But just like the same thing with God, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. The third reason and last reason is why you, can over, why, why you shouldn't worry about your problems is because you can overcome your worry. One of the main things that you can do to overcome your worry is become real with God. He cares about you so much and very deeply. He cares about your thoughts, your feelings, and even things you're unsure about. God honestly wants to hear what you're dealing with and how you feel. You shouldn't have to restrain yourself or use special religious words. So, whenever you're in doubt, just turn to Psalms 1 and 3. So, no, Psalms 31, 1, and 1 through 3. I come to you, Lord, for protection. Never let me be defeated. You are righteous. You are righteous, God. Save me, I pray. Hear me. Save me now. Be my refuge to protect me. My defense to save me. You are my refuge and defense. Guide me and lead me as you have promised. Amen. So pretty much that's all you have to pray whenever you're like in doubt. And I have this story to share with y'all that shows that God is always in control. And even though it may not seem relevant, it's always relevant. There's this story of this pregnant woman who was sitting under a tree and she was very thirsty and she needed water, but there was no water. Suddenly she saw some drops of water dripping down from the tree. She took a cup and started, trapping the do started tapping the drops. Wait. Started, yeah, tapping the drops. When the water got half of the cup, she was ready to drink. A bird came and knocked down the cup, and the water was spilled. It happened three times, and the woman felt very bad. She stuck a stone and killed the bird. 
After the bird had died, she saw that she had a big snake. She saw that a big snake was coming down the tree. So she discovered that what she wanted to drink was not water, but it was poison. She felt so guilty that she killed the bird, but the bird has saved her life. Sometimes God is like the bird to us. He knows when we are trying to help. He knows when we are about to take the poison, but we get so bitter with him when he's trying to help us. Maybe what you thought was water was poison. Drop the pain because there's nothing better. So you drop the pain because there's nothing better for you. Hold the hands of the Lord and keep following him. He will not let you suffer in shame in life. Just take two seconds of your time to say, thank you, Lord, for the good things he has done for you every day. Thank you. Stay, right, stay up here, son. I need all the young people to stand to your feet. Amen. That's a word for, for each of you today. That's a word not only for the youth, but it's a word for the adults. I need all my adults to stand, if you will. Amen. No need to worry. Boy, what this lesson would do for us if we would just internalize it. And we will learn how to just trust God and trust him at his word and know that, that God will never, listen to me, will never put more on us than what we can handle. We have to see God for who he really is. He is our heavenly father. And me being an earthly father, not wanting to do anything to harm my son, how much more would our heavenly father care for each and every one of us who have been made in his own image? So when situations and trials and stress start to mount in your life, it's imperative that you put in place the three principles that he taught us on today. It's important for us to trust God and not doubt him, to lean and depend on his word, knowing that everything is going to work together eventually for our good. Anybody in here facing some difficult situations? Amen. Amen. Any of us in here have faced difficult situations and God made a way? So I want to encourage each and every one of you that's here to, today. I know you just finished your Georgia milestones and you're excited and counting up the, the time that you're getting ready to get out for this year's school term. But I want to encourage you, finish strong. Do your very best every day. Trust God every day. And watch God bless your lives. Stay with the Lord. Amen. Stay with God. It makes a difference. Don't complain when the Lord knocks the poison out of your hand. He's trying to keep something from you that will harm you. So trust God. Hold hands, everybody. Amen. Grab the hand of the person next to you. Hallelujah. Even in the audience. Hallelujah. Thank y'all. Y'all bless me today. That's a word for us today. I was going to preach after that, but I don't have to preach after that. Because that was a message in and of itself. That if we would just take heed, as it says, no reason to worry. Hallelujah. I'm going a, I'm to a feast on that. And I encourage you to do the same. Father, I thank you today for every one of these young people that's here at this altar. I thank you, Lord God, because you have saw fit to bless them so abundantly. You bless them with parents that see the need for them to be in the house of the Lord. And, and Lord, even in that, sometimes it's difficult for these parents, especially single parents. But they're doing their very best to raise their children in the fear of God. And, and God, I thank you for bringing them to this point. Now, Father, I pray that you allow the word that was ministered today to get in their hearts, to let them know that you love them and that you care for them and that you have a plan for them and, and that if they just trust you and not worry, not get overwhelmed and not allow the trials and the tribulations, the temptations, the tests, the pressure, the peer pressure of life to get to them. When someone put a negative post about them on Instagram or on Snapchat, remind them who they really are that they're not what people say they are. They're who you say they are. And they are royalty. And I thank you for that. 
Now encourage them to always do their best. Never follow negativity. Never allow negativity to speak to them. But to resist it and stand on the truth of who they really are. Bless these parents. Bless those who are in the audience today. As we face life as adults, as we face life, Lord God, as, as young adults, sometimes life doesn't make any sense. And then we begin to try to fix it. We begin to worry. We, we begin to become, become consumed. But really, we should just trust. We should trust you, Lord God, and lean on you. So, Father, with that, I pray. I pray for healing. I pray for deliverance. I pray that you give your peace to those who seek you. Your word declares that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, that we shall be saved. Father God, you said you would save us. So Father, right now, I'm praying for these young people, Lord. There's somebody here that don't know you, that they would just cry out, Jesus, save me. I'm young, and I don't understand everything, but I do know I need God in my life. I don't want to sing about a God that I don't know personally. So, Father, touch them where they are. Encourage them where they are. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on and give these young folks a hand. All right. All right. Y'all can be seated now. Y'all can be seated now. Amen.